What's up and welcome into the today's video where I'd love to share with you some new and interesting opening traps in the Scandinavian defense which is characterized by the first black smooth pawn on d5 and it's one of the best openings for black under 2000 rating level I'd say. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov and let's go ahead and get started. So when your opponent goes into the Scandinavian defense usually you recapture black take with the queen and now after knight c3 they move their queen to a5 so that's the usual classical position of the Scandinavian defense and now you start developing your pieces normally and after that at some point as soon as you bring your knight out they will often play bishop g4 and I also want to address this thing in the, the today's video because in different openings not only in the Scandinavian defense lots of your opponents will try to put this pin and will try to create problems and attack you that way so you gotta know how to deal with it and I'm gonna share with you some creative ways of dealing with the pin in the today's video. Now, at first you say, well, I'm just playing pawn h3 and now I'm driving this bishop away. And yes, indeed, if the bishop goes away, the problem is solved. But in this position, there is one very interesting line for black, which is queen to h5, which creates this dual pin. First of all, it uh, enforces the pin along this diagonal, putting even more pressure onto the knight. But in addition to that, it also pins the pawn so that the pawn can never capture the bishop or else the, the rook will be lost. And therefore, it makes the white's task quite challenging. And if you aren't prepared, you can easily get confused. But if you are prepared, after this video, you will bravely capture the bishop over here, allowing black to simulate execute their threat. And after that, you'll play another mysterious move, knight to e2. And at this point, your opponent may realize that he was trapped, because now the queen is trapped, there is no way to escape, and you're gonna play knight g3, and after that, capture that queen, and there is nothing black can do against this, even if they figure out your threat. So usually they'll just capture this pawn, or after any other move, there's just knight g3, there's no way to escape, and you win the queen and the game. All right, here comes the second trap in this classical position of the Scandinavian defense. After you play pawn d4, some of your opponents may respond with knight to c6, targeting this pawn right away. And lots of the white's players are getting confused and start playing defensive moves, trying to defend this pawn, but there is no reason for to do that. You can instead be an aggressive and bravely play pawn e5, kicking the knight away from there from c6. And why? White usually refrains from this move because they think that after knight b4, black has too many active opportunities here, putting pressure once again on this pawn, potentially ready to attack this pawn together with the bishop, and it looks like black has too strong pressure against you. But let's see, we play pawn a3 first, aiming at this knight, but black thinks to himself, hey, it's still pinned, right, so I can capture the knight, so let me just play bishop f5 out, threatening to capture this pawn with probably the knight, which will fork your king and rook and again at this point it seems that white is in trouble but you play another critical move bishop to b5 check and this move basically breaks the black's plan because now black has to address the check somehow right what can they do well if black tries moving their king that would put the king to a really exposed and terrible position probably black does not want to do that your opponent may also bring their bishop back but that would also force the black's king to move Reduce, you know, remove the threat from your c2 pawn, so that's also not the move to worry about. This uh, this would be a passive and bad choice for black. The most challenging move is definitely the move pawn c6, which adds attack to this bishop in addition to the other threats of black. And now, temporarily, it may seem like white is indeed in trouble and is almost losing the game, but here is the trick. You play pawn takes b4, sacrificing the rook here on a1 and after that after a pawn takes c6 all of a sudden it turns out that you have set up this really devastating discover check on the next move and there is nothing black can do against it really because you're threatening to capture the pawn here potentially with check to the king or push the pawn forward again check to the king and it's nearly a checkmate because your queen is also doing a great job controlling this open file so check to the king would be virtually a checkmate and basically, black is defenseless. If they try rook d8, you still play pawn c7, check to the king, and after that you just start grabbing everything, and this is checkmate. And of course, there are some other lines that black may opt to play. I'll link a video where I analyze those different uh, variations, and I'm sharing with you some nice traps there. But for now, let's switch over to the classical way of black for black to play, which is knight to f6. 
Black refuses to expose their queen too early in the game, which may give white some extra temples to develop the knight and attack the queen. Instead, Black says, hey, I'm gonna capture this pawn calmly with my knight, and I'm doing fine. In this case, you play pawn d4, Black captures the pawn, now you play pawn to c4, so that even though Black got their pawn back, but at least you build this beautiful pawn center, they play knight to b6, which is the main move in the position. And after knight f3, lots of your pawns will once again play the same nasty move bishop g4, which again may seem unpleasant because it puts the pin over here. And if black manages to trade here on f3, maybe they're gonna attack this pawn on d4 as well. Therefore, all in all, seems uncomfortable to white. And again, if you don't know what, what to do here, you may go down pretty quick. But we're gonna play pawn c5 first, attacking this knight which may seem like not a good move to play because it allows the black's knight to relocate back to the center to this strong square so it seems like you're playing bad moves but you've got something in mind you want to play queen b3 and all of a sudden the black's position becomes very very difficult now you take advantage of the fact that the b7 pawn is no longer defended by the bishop due to the absence of bishop over there and once you capture the pawn you're gonna attack all around and black is gonna be in a big trouble in addition to that, you're also unpinning the knight, so this pin is no longer an issue, and your knight is free to jump forward to e5 and to create lots of threats there. So believe it or not, black is very likely to lose the game within just a few moves in, in this position, even though right now it seems like black played nothing wrong and they were just playing normal moves. For example, if they defend this pawn by playing pawn b6, then you execute your second threat, knight to e5, attacking here the bishop, in addition to that, you're threatening to play bishop b5, which would attack the king, and black is here literally lost. There is no way for black to save their position, because your pressure is just way too strong. Your queen is also putting pressure along this diagonal to the knight and uh, pawn, and just by the amount of arrows on the board, you can see that you definitely have a lot of threats here. Usually black will play bishop to e6, trying to not only remove their bishop from the attack, but also to solidify their position here in the center of the board, but it still fails to bishop b5 check. And there is no way for black to cover their king comfortably, and uh, if they try doing that, they'll inevitably lose the, their knight on d5. So here, a check to the king once again. If they try to cover, they're losing their knight here on d5. You still attack this rook, so most often they're, they're gonna move the rook away, which also will blunder this time the checkmate bishop takes f7. But even if they don't blunder the checkmate, you already are up a lot of materials, or you're getting an easily winning position. So it's quite, quite amusing how black's position fell apart so quickly after they played seemingly natural moves. So that's the power of knowing how to react properly when your opponent tries to attack you early in the game. And now it's time for a little quiz. Let's come back to the Queen takes d5, possibly the main move in the position, after a knight c3, even though queen a5 is the main move, but the second most played move is queen to d8, putting the, the queen back to its original square, and after that, when you go pawn d4, one of the ways for black to try to attack you early is to put pressure onto this pawn, they play knight c6, hitting the pawn, and after you defend it, they play bishop g4, putting this pin, which also kind of solidifies their attack against your pawn on d4 and against the knight. And I'd love to, well, let me play one more, one more move here, pawn d5, knight e5. And in this case, I'd love to ask you to think about this position and to let me know how would you play here as white. It's your move, and if you can find the winning move for white, please write it down in the comments below. You may like to also check out this video where I cover some additional lines of the Scandinavian defense that I haven't analyzed today. Also, if you want to know how to improve your chest level rapidly, you may watch my free masterclass where I share a few most important ways to progress in chess, even if you have little time to train. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.